Hey guys, so it has been one year since I gave birth to Brooks and I wanted to do a update as to where I'm at kind of physically Do you want some milk? Where he's at, he had his one year appointment and what's kind of been going on. So to start with his health, where he's at. He had a good checkup. Height-wise, he's in the 34th percentile. Um, Weight-wise, it's a little bit less than that. And overall, he's doing all the right things. He's standing. He's standing loads. He's crawling. He's eating well. He had a check on his lead levels. That's required by New York State. And um, his his levels were just barely in the like really out of the really low range. So he's taking a supplement that I am also black, basically black earth, and it's supposed to help detox. And he's going to be checked again at 15. He's going to be checked again at 15 months um, to see what his levels are. But otherwise, all good with him in terms of my own personal health. Physically, I feel better. There's been a bigger shift over the last few months because I've been more intentional with um, what's going into my body, the movement I'm trying to do. I'm really trying to help my pelvic area because it's just very weak from the back-to-back -back pregnancies. I don't have great muscle tone there and I tried to play some disc golf recently and that I totally felt strained, pulled a muscle more out of I think weakness of exercising those mu muscles than any other reason. I wasn't doing anything crazy so trying to exercise more. I did hit my lowest weight I've been since probably middle school which is a little bit, you know, not great, but I'm also not too worried about it. I've tracked a few days of eating just to see where I'm at in terms of calories and making sure I'm eating enough every day, but it's a challenge to consume enough calories considering I'm still breastfeeding a decent amount, plus picking up honor from school and you know, the dynamics of having an older child in the family with a young baby, it's Honor wants to be out and about a lot and kind of more what I need and what Brooks needs at this moment in time is kind of more, I would argue, time kind of at home, outside here. Um, so, so I do feel like my physical health has been a little bit not where I'd like it to be, but more recently I've been able to do red light, I've been juicing, celery juicing, I've been trying to do get back to doing some cold expo exposure through, mostly just through cold showers a little bit. I feel in a good place with it at this point, but I'm definitely not back to 100% health, and I'd like to gain some weight in general, obviously some muscles I don't have. Um, much muscle tone since uh, I pretty much lost it all with my pregnancy with Allie and obviously haven't had a chance to really work on any muscle groups or trying to get stronger in any way so I look forward to doing some of that. Emotionally it's obviously a little bit of a challenging time of year. Um, Brooks being born on the day Allie died is just really kind of surreal that that still happened. It was kind of the night before that I had a little bit of like, not a meltdown, but a moment of uh, reflection, sadness, just feeling like how complete our family would feel if our daughter was here. There's a lot of pain surrounding that time, those moments that led up to ultimately saying goodbye and uh, one year later 
you know, welcoming or sun is just crazy to to feel the drasticness of what happened there. I still feel like on some level I really haven't processed all the way, you know, what happened with Allie and one of the main pieces that I feel like gets talked a lot about when it comes to death and dying is just that time heals. And while that is definitely true, in some ways I feel like time isn't healing. Time is allowing us to forget and we're designed to remember the good things. So as time goes on, our memories become fewer and fewer. Our feelings about people, events become less and all we have are some of the best moments um, to remember. And don't get me wrong, there are a lot of memories that I have that are very painful memories, but even those memories, there's less of them that I can think of. I'm not creating new memories with her. My life is only growing apart from that situation. This idea of us forgetting is in some ways a healing. Um, because we, do, we can't be continuing to live our life in that state of pain, in that state of suffering, in that state of unsettledness. I mean, when I, when I relate to that time in my life, when I pause, when I have big moments of sadness, I, I know I can't live there for that long a period of time because it's, it's consuming you would suffer so much and Hi. a situation happened at the doctor's office where one of the nurse's aides asked how many kids I had and then followed that up with is this your first and I am challenged with that question and I still will be probably Anyway, I was challenged with the question, as it's always challenging, and I left. I basically said I have a 10-year-old daughter, and that I have a another daughter who passed away at six weeks old. It's difficult to answer those questions more for myself because our situation... So that question will never get easier of how many kids I have. Um, it's, I feel like I'm neglecting Allie when I don't acknowledge her. When people ask how many kids I have and I say two, I later on feel like, why didn't I t talk about her? Or why didn't I at least acknowledge her? And other times I feel like I'm putting other people what did you do? I feel like I'm putting other people in a situation where they have to acknowledge the fact that I have a daughter that passed. And I don't feel like that's a place they need to be put in. Um, Hi! I don't want anyway, emotionally I feel decent. And I look forward to writing more in the future and being able to process and potentially create a book from what happened, I suppose. My experience, what happened. Um, yeah. 
and spiritually, I mean, I do feel like Brooks is obviously connected to Allie in some way. He was born on the day she died. But in terms of a connection to Allie that I felt, I really haven't felt much um, since she's passed. I haven't had a single dream. <laughs> Are you talking? I haven't had a dream with her in it. Um, I did have an experience the day before she was born, February 2nd, um, somewhat recently. I heard mom very clearly like seven or eight times and I know honor sometimes peeks in my room and she'll say mom 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 and so I looked and didn't see her and then I kept hearing it and then I heard downstairs that honor was running around downstairs just by her footsteps I knew um, and once honor walked up the stairs it stopped so that was my first, I feel like, experience of some um, spiritual, some out of this reality type of experience. And whether I was making it up in my head or what, I definitely think I heard it. I w definitely was not asleep. Brooks was just about asleep. I was laying next to him. and would like to follow that with a medium reading, which I've had one, and I was pregnant with Brooks at the time, and they not only talked about Allie and um, kind of, I guess, what she was feeling on the other side, but also acknowledged that there was a young boy there also, and it didn't really get acknowledged again, but I immediately thought that it was obviously the baby I was carrying. And at the time, I didn't know if I was having a boy or a girl, so. Um. Thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of this. Feel free to ask your questions below. Oh, little sweetie. Come here, do you need some more milk? Come here, come here. Thanks so much for watching. I will uh, film more in the future. If you have any questions, you can leave them below. Uh, thank you for tolerating this little guy who's around now when I make videos. And uh, hopefully the audio quality was okay because I couldn't find my microphone. So, anyway. I will see you soon in another video.